This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a Kenmore Frigidaire dryer that isn't heating up. So I open up the top by pressing in on the two clips in the front with my paint scraper. They're about two inches in from each side. I'm disconnecting the little modular connector here. I've already unplugged the machine and also turned off the breaker so no power. So now I'm going to check, it doesn't have any heat getting to it, so I'm going to check this little thermal overload here in the back. It's the upper right hand corner behind the drum. There's two terminals and you put your continuity tester on the two terminals and you see if you get, in this case, an auditory signal. So the thermal overload is okay. Sometimes those blow and it's pretty simple to rem remove them and put a new one in. So I'm going to check a little bit deeper into the mechanism into the dryer. I'm going to remove this little plastic piece that holds the drum in position. I'm going to take out a little screw here in the upper left hand corner and also in the upper right hand corner. These are inside the dryer so you have to keep the top propped up and remove these two little screws. And then the front panel comes off pretty easily. So here's the one on the other side too. So I grab the front panel, pull it toward me, and then <clears throat> I just have to lift it up off. There's actually a little zip tie holding on one of the wire cables. So I cut that so I can get that wire cable out because it's connected to the front panel. I lift up the front panel, get it out of the way. And this is going to allow me to get in a little bit bit deeper where I can test a few other things that sometimes will cut off the heat. So I disconnected the belt and now I'm going to be pulling out the tumbler or the drum. And what you have to do on this model is lift up in the back by about two inches to get it off of the back bearing and then you can pull it out towards you. I usually put my hands underneath the drum and push up pretty hard to get it off of the rear bearing. So again, I'm testing a couple things here. These are the terminals for the heating element. I'm testing it for continuity and I'm getting a good result. So that isn't a problem. And then I'm going to test another little thermal overload here. So I took off one of the wires off of the terminal and then I tested for continuity. So that checked out. That one's doing good. And then I have the thermostat here, the high limit thermostat. Take off one of the legs, one of the wires and test that too. So I'm just looking to see, making sure the element is not broken, but it did, it did have continuity. So I think it's okay. It's always best, if possible, to remove one of the wires off of a circuit before you test for continuity because it can give you a false reading otherwise. So I got one of the wires off of the element, and now I'm going to put my probes on each of the <coughs> terminals, <coughs> and it has good continuity, so it's not broken. That's a common problem, though, that that one will break. So now I'm on the burner tube and I'm checking another part for continuity. Okay, so everything checks out. So I'm going to put the drum back in. I've already got the belt on it, kind of loose. I'm going to push it back and then lift it up slightly in the back and then push it down so it can sit back down on the rear bearing. Get the belt back on. I'm going to put the belt over the idler wheel and then over the motor pulley. And then I'll, once I get it in position, I'll turn the, turn the drum a few times to make sure that the belt stays on and is in the right position. So right now I'm just pushing both arms in underneath so I can get that belt on correctly. 
and you're doing it blind you can't really see so just take your time stretch the <coughs> motor pulley to the left spring spring loaded and then get it up over I'm sorry it's the idler wheel to the left and then get it up over the motor pulley so I'm just turning it now making sure the belt stays on uh, that's important because if you reassemble and it's not really in position you have to take it all apart again so before you reassemble just turn the drum a few times make sure it stays in position you put this little plastic piece back on that holds the drum in to position so it's got one little Phillips head screw holding it in. <clears throat> Tighten that up. All right, now we're going to put the front panel back on. So I put it on first on the bottom at bring it on at an angle about 30 degree angle. And when it flips on the bottom, it just slides right on. And I gently bring it forward toward the cabinet. And then I have to reach in and lift up on the drum slightly. I'm going to push these cables back in. Get them out of the way. And I'm going to lift up on the drum a little bit so I can lift it onto the front bearing. And then I can push in. And there's some clips that will hold the front panel in position, but we do want to put it in these two Phillips head screws back in the upper left and upper right hand corner. Put them in with uh, just your fingers first and then use your Phillips screwdriver to get them tight. So we got those on both sides and that holds that front panel on securely. And we're going to hook these cables back. There's two of them. They're just modular cables that bring power to the front panel on the timer and then send power back down to the motor and the heater. So we'll make sure those are secure. Again, the problem with this dryer was we had no heat. And the reason we ended up having no heat turns out to be pretty funny that we'll see here in a second. But all the things we checked are common reasons why there's no heat a broken element or a high limit or thermal <coughs> fuse that's blown. So we're going to turn the power back on, give it a test, turn it on, wait a little bit, and it's spinning but again no heat. So I look more carefully here at the dials. I'm testing, I'm putting it on time dry and then I noticed that the temperature selector was on air, air, uh, no heat fluff. And that's the reason there was no heat. So it was actually, the machine was fine. It was just set incorrectly. So I set it back to normal where it has high heat and it did great. So nothing wrong with the dryer. It was just the owner set it in the wrong setting. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel.